right, here's the practice video solutions for the test solving systems of linear equations. So let's look at number one. It says, given this system of equations, y equals negative x minus 1, and y equals 2x minus 4, which of the following graph shows a solution? Well, just like we learned last unit, when we have slope-intercept form, which these are all in, y equals mx plus b, there are certain parts here that can help us. For example, the y-intercept. That would be the first thing I would look at. So, we know the y-intercept here is negative 1, and the y-intercept here is negative 4. So let's go ahead and look at the graphs and see which one match up. So here, the y-intercept is negative 1. Well, that's right here. So that's not possible. Okay, negative 1, that's right here. So that's not possible. Negative 1, that's right here, so that's possible. And negative 1 is right there, so that's possible. So, without graphing this equation, we at least know that C and D are the only ones. So now let's do the next one. So the y-intercept here is negative 4. So we already got rid of those two, so let's look. So here's the y-intercept of the other one is negative 4, so that works. But notice, your y-intercept, negative 4 down here, there isn't a line. So you know that these two lines are the ones that are graphed according to this. Because those are the only two ones that match the y-intercept. So where do they match up? Right there. So if we needed to put the ordered pair, it would have been over 1 and down negative 2. But we just needed to match up the graph. So don't forget that we can use knowledge from last unit about slope and intercepts too. All right, number two. Which of the following shows the graphic solution? Well, let's do the same thing. Okay, I'm going to write this a little bit bigger. Y equals one-half X minus one. And Y equals negative X minus one. So let's do our same change opposite like always. All right, so we know that these two graphs have to have... Uh, what? What do they have to have, Joey Romero? What do they have to have according to our system of equations? No. Look at them. What are, what is this? What is this called? The y -intercept. What's this one called? What do you notice about those y-intercepts? They're the same. So, They're the same. Awesome. so we know that both of those lines have to cross at that same y-intercept, right? Well, that's where it is, so that's not right. Oh, there they both cross, so that's possible. They don't cross there, and they don't cross there. So we know, from just using again the y-intercepts, that they both had to cross. So now, what would our solution be if we had to write it down? What would our solution be? If instead of, instead of having to match the graph, what if they actually wanted the solution? What would it be? Negative one. No. Oh, zero, negative zero, negative one. Very good. Okay, number three. Which pair of equations corresponds to the two lines in the graph? So let's go backwards. Instead of looking at the equation and finding the y-intercept, now let's look at the graph and find the y-intercept. So let's, let's call this line A. All right, line A, what's the y-intercept? Line A. No, one. Okay, let's go to line B. Let's call that line B. What's the y-intercept in line B? Negative one. All right, well, which two equations have that? Okay. Positive 1, negative 1, positive 1, negative 1, positive. Oh, they all do. Wow. So that doesn't help us, does it? All right, so now we have to go and use what other part of the equation? Slope. Slope, all right. Okay, so let's start here. Positive 1, what's the slope? So up 2 over, over 1 doesn't match, does it? Up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1, so that one doesn't work. Go to B. Let's start with the first one. So that would be negative 1 right here, right? 
What's the slope? So up to over one, up to over one, so that matches. So let's do the second equation. What's the line shift? One, right there. And what's the slope? Negative one half, right? So up one, and then to the left two. Up one to the left two, and that matches, doesn't it? So both of these equations matched up here, so that's our answer. Number four, solve the following system of equations for y. All right, well, and we can either graph, substitute, or eliminate. Well, we can't use substitution, really, because neither of them has only an x or y. So we can either put them in the slope-intercept form and graph them, or we can do use the elimination method. What do you want to do? All right, so let's eliminate. Okay, so let me go ahead and... All right. Let's just make more bigger. So we have to line them up, right? So, I have x. I have, let's go 2x plus y equals 5. So that's this one. Well, guys, i got to get this one over the same thing. So where my x and y are on the left, right? So I got to get this one on the left too, don't I? Yeah. So we have to move this 3y over to this side. So it matches this type of equation. Those cancel, so I'm left with x plus negative 3y. That's these two. And that equals that negative 15. And now they line up, don't they? So do you understand why we have to do that? Okay. Well, do we want to make this one to the opposite of this, negative 2? Or do we want to make this one into the opposite of that, negative 3, which would be 3? What term do you want to do, x's or y's? X's? All right. What do we multiply 1 by to make it negative 2? Yeah. So do everything negative 2. So I have this equation, 2x plus y equals 5. And then my new equation is negative 2x, so there's my opposites, positive 6y, and positive 30. Okay, these cancel. So I'm left with 7y equals 35. So divide by 7, what's y? 5. So now let's go back and see if that's our only 1. All right, and that's all we had to do. It didn't ask us for x and y, just y, and there it is. Okay. All right, so now let's solve this one. Okay, what method do you want to use? Graphing, substitution, or elimination? Uh, well, is it in slope-intercept form? So we don't want to graph. Is there only an x or only a y in any of the equations? No, there's an x and a y, so we're probably going to have to do what? Elimination again. So let me go ahead, take a picture, and get a new one. Okay, now the nice thing is they're already lined up, aren't they? All right. To our same change opposite. All right, well, what do you notice? That the two y's are the same. Not the same. They're already opposites, aren't they? We don't have to do any multiplying. They're already opposites. So it's set up for us. So these cancel, don't they? All right, what's x and x? Two x. Two x's. Four and 12 is 16. Okay, solve for x. What do you get? Now, what did we need to find out in that problem? You can just solve for the x. Oh, well, there we go. Solve for the x. It was 8. So we're not finding both. Okay. The equation of two lines are these. What is the intersection? So, well... What are we going to do in that method? Yeah. Are they in slope intercept form? So do they only have an x or y? Yes, yeah, so let's do the elimination method again. All right. Okay, they're already lined up. So we can add. Let's do our same change opposite. All right, do we have opposites? No. So. Which ones do we want to work with? The x's and the 4 and 3, or the y's and the 1 and negative 2? 
Remember, you got to make them opposites. Yeah, if I make if I do the x's, four I can't make four into three, and I can't make three into four, can I? So I'd have to do both of them. In other words, we're finding out where they meet. They're common multiple, but it's just got to be opposites. So I'd actually have to make these into twelves. One of them would be positive twelve, and one would be negative twelve. So that doesn't work very well. So instead, why don't we just make this one? into the opposite of negative 2. All right? What's the opposite of negative 2? Two? 2. All right, so how do I make 1 into a 2? Times 2. Yeah, there you go. So now I'll multiply everything times 2. So my new equation would be 8x plus 2y equals 20. And the equation I didn't do anything was 3x plus, and there's my opposites, equals 13. All right, now we can add what cancels. The, the, the y's cancel. Good. So I'm left 11x equals 33. So divide by 11. So what is x? 3. So now we needed to find both x and y, didn't we? But we can eliminate x was 3. Well, gee, which one is the answer? Yeah, that's the only one with the x being 3. All right. Okay. All right, solve by graphing. Okay, well, that's easy enough. They're already in slope reducer form, correct? Yep. All right, here we go. Okay, y intercept is 2. My slope is negative 1, so up 1 into the left one, up 1 into the left one, up 1 into the left one. All right, let's do the other one. The y-intercept is what? No, the other one. Six. So right there, and what's the slope? Three. So up three over one, and since I'd be off the paper, I'll go down three and in the opposite direction, and lo and behold, look where they're going to meet already. Right there. So what's the point where they meet? Negative one. Negative one. Three. Easy stuff. Okay. Next problem. Solve by graphing. So let's keep my same graph. Oops, I don't do that. Let's keep my same graph. Well, let me... Let's go... Okay. that over. Okay. Same change opposite. All right. What's the y-intercept? Negative 3. What's my slope? Negative what? So up 4. In which direction? Left. To the left one. Up 4 to the left one because it's got to be negative. Okay. There you go. All right. What's my y-intercept on the other one? 7, so right there, what's my slope? So up 1 to the right 1, up 1 to the right 1. And there you go. What's my point of intersection? Intersection? No, negative 2. Well, obviously it's that one, right? Okay. Number 9. The tables correspond to two lines in the coordinate plane. What is the x-coordinate at the point of intersection of the two lines? So we know that when the two lines intersect, what do we know about that point? That that's where they both. They both are the same, right? Yeah. Well, look at those two tables. Can you find where both the points are the same for each one? So 4, 12, 4, 12. Yeah, 4, 12 here. 412 here, that must mean that's the only spot where they share the same point. Obviously, that's the point of intersection. Easy stuff. They want to know the x-coordinate. So what is the x-coordinate? There we go. Yeah, so it's not so hard. Okay, number 10. Okay. Given the system of equations... Two 
to y minus plus x equals 4, 2x equals negative 4. What is the point of intersection? Use proper ordered pair form. Well, which method do I want to use here? Go through the method. Are they in slope intercept form? No. No. Uh, does one of the equations only have an x or y? Yeah. So what's the substitution? So we have 2y plus x equals 4 and 2x equals negative 4. Which one are we going to solve? Which one has only the x? 2x equals negative 2x equals negative 4. So solve it. So what's x? Uh, negative 2. So we already, we already are done with half of that. Now what do I do to find the y? Substitute. Substitute it back over here. So I have 2y plus negative 2 equals 4. So, what do I have to get rid of? The uh, y. No, the y has to stay. Remember, if I were to highlight, i got to get rid of this part and this part to get the y by itself. What do I do first? It's just a two-step equation. Divide 2 of the... No, you always deal with the part that's not attached first. You always do the opposite of the number part. The part that can go without messing with the letter you want to keep. So that goes away. So now I'm left at 2y equals 6. What do I do here? Divide. Okay, divide by 2. And what is y equal to? 3. So, what is your ordered pair? Negative 2. Negative 2, 3. Okay? Alright, what method do we want to use for number 11? Substitution. Yeah. Because again, I have an equation with only an y or x. And look, that's already done for us. We already know half of it. So now we're going to do the same thing as we did in number 10. It's substitute. So we have 3x plus 2 times y equals 4. Okay, so 3x equals, or 3x plus, what is that? Negative 8. It's a two-step equation. i got to get this by itself. If I were to highlight, this is what I would highlight. So what's got to go first? So what's the opposite of the negative 8? Okay, always do that part first. Now we deal with the part that's attached next to. Okay, so the opposite of multiplying by 3. All right, dividing by 3. So x equals... So, all right, so what's my point? Four. There you go. 4, negative 4. Make sure you put the x first, then the y second. All right, good job.